Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about that Ohio State-Oregon game. Could very well be the game of the year. Up there in Eugene, I am picking Ohio State. I feel very, very confused about what that game is going to hold. So we'll see what happens in that one. Going to be an absolute rock fight and cannot wait for it to get underway. But let's get into the other big time game happening in the Big Ten this upcoming weekend. Penn State heads all the way out to LA to play their first game all, all the way out on the West Coast. Definitely going to be an interesting game for them to face. I played UCLA last week, but they had to come all the way to them. So a huge, huge game for Penn State. And it it's a massive game for James Franklin. It's one of those games that you're going to be defined by going forward. No two ways about that. And in uh, doing so, we get a little bit of a rematch of a very tough moment in James Franklin's uh, history at Penn State. That USC Sam Darnold comeback in t uh, 2017 was special. One of the best games that I've seen in quite some time, and you can only hope that we get something like that on Saturday. But the reality is people are really down on USC. You know, you saw that game last week. It looks like there's a formula, right? It looks like it's wear them down as, as much as you can in the run game and then make a couple of big plays and you'll probably win the game. That's got to be a really tough thing for USC to deal with, but the reality is they are much improved on defense. They're playing much better defensive football now. They do have an injury that we'll get to here in a second, but the reality is they're playing much better on defense, and when Miller Moss gets going, he's really hard to slow down. Now, can Penn State slow him down is the big-time question, and I think it's going to be a really interesting one because Penn State's been waiting for this. They've been waiting for that moment to show that they are a different team than they were a year ago. Now, a lot of people will walk out of this game regardless of the result and say, well, USC's no good, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but at the end of the day, it would be a huge win going out to LA, beating a team that is much improved on uh, defense and has a very potent offense. Being able to get that win would be absolutely massive for this program and would at least show us that they're moving in the right direction. That Ohio State game is going to be the moniker, but the reality is we'll give you a good idea that this team is at least pushing in the right direction going forward. And then you got the big battle. Andy Kotelnicki versus DeAnton Lynn is going to be downright special. Kotelnicki, the new offensive coordinator for Penn State, USC hired DeAnton Lynn to run their defense, and it's going to be incredible. It's one of those things that I think Penn State has been holding just a little bit back offensively, at least over the last couple of weeks. And then I think USC has played really good de uh, defensive football, especially when you consider the people that they have on that defense, the personnel itself. They've been really, really good. And DeAnton Lynn's done an incredible job with that, with that unit. Frankly, you can make the argument that these are two of the best coordinator hires in the entire country. So it's going to be incredible to watch these two go at it. And frankly, whoever wins that battle is likely winning this game. And then this could be De uh, Drew Aller's arrival. This could be the moment that everyone looks back on and says, that was when he became a superstar, and frankly, he's already really good. No two ways about that, but you obviously have the Ohio State came, game coming down the road, but if he goes into L.A. and beats a USC team, he's going to get a lot of praise, and he very much deserves that. And then you got to talk about the coaches. It's going to be a fight for both these coaches if they come on the wrong side of this one. Lincoln Riley would go to 1-3 and three in conference. Would not be great things for USC by any means. And then James Franklin losing one of these games is all too familiar for Penn State fans. So they got to make sure that they get that win. But the reality is there's so many different things going into this game. It's going to be an absolute battle one way or the other. But the guy I'm watching most closely is Nick Singleton. He is someone that he didn't play last week against UCLA. So something to keep in mind when you look back at that game. And he's going to be a monster. I think he's going to be the guy that they lean on the rest of the way in that running back duo. And frankly... He's going to be a load for USC to deal with. There's so many guys that have the ability to make really good plays at that on the defensive side and slow down guys. I don't know if they can slow down Catron Allen and Nick Singleton. They are absolutely terrifying individuals, and frankly, they will run through you, they will run around you, they will do anything that they need to do to get by you, and they can do it all. They're absolutely incredible, and one of those duos that one of the best in the country, and I tend to believe they're going to prove it on Saturday. Then we got A.J. Harris. This is why they brought A.J. Harris in. This is the game, Ohio State included, this is the game that they brought him in for. They brought him in to lock up Deuce Knight, to play against Jacoby Lane, to play against all these elite wide receivers on the other side, and hold your own. And frankly, I think this Penn State back end is really, really talented, might be even a little bit more talented than past year's teams. And frankly, I think it's one of those units that just needs to prove themselves a little bit more. I think they've played not the elite offenses that you would expect, especially throwing the football. This is going to be that, and he's going to have to step up huge as well as a number of guys on that back end, but this is why they went and got A.J. Harris. They went and got him to shut down one of these USC wide receivers and make them feel really good about one of their sides of the field on defense. Then we got to talk about Deuce Robinson. This is someone I talked about uh, last week when I broke down the Minnesota game. Frankly, 
I think they just got to unlock him. He is one of the biggest mismatches that you have ever seen on a football field. About 6'6", can run just ridiculously fast, and is an absolute problem in the uh, with the ball in the air. So I think he's one of those guys you're just going to have to unlock if you're USC and you want to be able to compete with a lot of these elite teams, especially elite defenses. you got to have as many options as possible, and I think Deuce Robinson is an elite, elite option for them, along with Jacoby Lane and all those other guys. And then we got to talk about Mason Cobb. Eric Gentry doesn't sound like he's going to be playing in this game, has had some injury troubles, so hoping for the best for him. But Mason Cobb is going to have to step up in this game. It is going to be a lot of run. It is going to be a lot asked on these linebackers to make the play and make the run fit that they need to. And now it's going to be Mason Cobb. It's going to be Mascarenas Arnold. It's going to be a number of other guys stepping up at that position. But Eric Gentry is the dude. Eric Gentry is the leader of maybe this entire defense, but especially that linebacker room. And they're going to have to step up in a big way without him on Saturday. And then you got Penn State. How can they win this game? And frankly, it's exactly how Michigan uh, won it. It's exactly how Minnesota won it. Run the ball. You have two elite running backs in that uh, backfield. You have Singleton, just over 400 yards. Catron Allen, uh, 367 on the year. These guys could win the game for you outright. That You could hand them the ball 65 times in this game and walk out with a win because that's how good they are. I think USC's defense has improved a lot. I also think when you bruise a team that only has one 300-pounder on their defense, you're probably going to find openings at some point, especially with these two running backs. So, I think that's probably the way that Penn State's going to go about business. And then you got to find the openings for big plays. That's another piece to this because the reality is Jarrell has only thrown the ball 20 yards downfield 12 times this year. That is less than Arch Manning, who has played much less games than Jarrell. So the reality is they're probably going to do it a little bit more in this game. I tend to believe this is the game where they open up that uh, playbook just a little bit more. He On those 12 attempts, to be totally fair, three touchdowns, 320, uh, and no interceptions. He is the guy that changes your offense from really good to absolutely elite. And you got to unlock him in this game, at least at moments. Don't necessarily need to force anything, but once you find those openings, let him rip the ball. And then finally, swallow up run lanes. It's going to be a really, really tough day for USC if they can't run the ball. Woody Marks is a very, very good player. This O-line is not necessarily all that great. So Zane Durant, Devon J. Thomas, Alonzo Ford, all really, really solid interior defensive linemen, and they're going to have to play really, really good. If they can dominate the line of scrimmage and plug up run, uh, the run game, it's going to be impossible for USC's offense to get off the ground in this game. And then we got USC. Get the ball out quick. It is going to be a nightmare dealing with this front seven like we just talked about in the run game, but also in the pass game. You have to make sure that Abdul Carter does not get home, and the only way, way to do that really is to get the ball out of Miller Moss's hands quickly. Now, uh, Lincoln Riley does an incredible job of this, of getting his guys into a rhythm early, and then you got some dudes. You got Zachariah Branch, Makai Lemon, a ton of other uh, speedsters that can make that play with the ball in their hands, can make that take that drag for five yards to 60 yards for the touchdown, or take that screen pass that they catch two yards behind the line of scrimmage for 75 yards and a touchdown. So it's going to be a huge game, and I think when you look at all of the different things that Penn State has advantages of, especially in the line of scrimmages, you're going to have to negate that somehow. The really only way to do that, especially with the de- defensive ends that uh, Penn State has, is get the ball out of Miller Moss's hands fast and then live with the results at the end of the day. You also got to start fast. So you got to have a 15-play uh, script that is absolutely beautiful. This is the moment where Lincoln Riley really unleashes himself. Frankly, we saw it with Steve Sarkeesian up in Ann Arbor against Michigan. I want to see the same exact uh, type result in the first couple of drives for USC in this game. And frankly, If you don't, it's going to be a really long day. If Penn State is able to dictate the pacing of this game, USC has very little shot to win. That's just the reality, especially with the uh, the running backs that they have. It's going to be an absolute nightmare if USC cannot start quickly, cannot play from a lead, and allows Penn State to just kind of wear them down, run the ball, and take a 14-point win at, at the end of the day. So it's going to be incredible to watch this unfold, and frankly... I think Lincoln Riley has plenty in his bag to get off to a quick start, to get up 14-0, uh, 10-0, what have you, and then things get really good going. But they didn't necessarily do it against Michigan, or they did do it against Michigan to a certain extent. But the reality is, if you don't do it against Penn State, you are not remotely winning this game. And then finally, you got to get Aller guessing. This is a very, very good quarterback on the other side. This is a guy that I frankly think going into next year is probably going to be top five in Heisman odds, and he very well should be. But the reality is he's still relatively young. He's played plenty of football at this point, so it's not necessarily that he's you know not faced big-time uh, situations, but this is going to be a little bit different. Traveling all the way across the country, playing a defense that 
is a little bit hard to get a beat on. You kind of know who they are personnel-wise. You know who they are identity-wise. But Danton Lynn does a great job of kind of disguising things and keeping everything kind of in front of them and making sure that there's not a ton of uh, big-time plays on the other side. Now, a little bit of tough tackling can get in the way of that, but the reality is... He's got to make sure that Drow is just thinking a little bit too much. He's got to use different pressures, keep changing coverages, do all the things that you can put on, you know, a relatively young kid in Drew Aller and possibly get a good time result. So it's going to be really interesting to watch that one. I think it's a battle between a quarterback that seems to be really, really good at this very moment, but probably is facing the best uh, play caller that he's faced all year. And we'll see what uh, D'Anton Lynn can do. Frankly, if he can't confuse Drew Aller, it's going to be a nightmare day for his defense. But I think it's going to be a little bit of a fight. I think Penn State is going to be able to control this game for the majority of it. I think USC could possibly score a touchdown late to make it look a little bit better, or maybe Penn State's able to pull away late. But the reality is, I think when you look at that USC team, it's really hard for me to say they can go up against Catron Allen and Nicholas Singleton and come out a winner. So it's going to be an absolute battle. I think it's going to be a little bit, we're going to learn that USC is not quite as bad as we made him out to be, but the reality is I do think Penn State does get that win, kind of gets a little bit of monkey off the back of the Big Ten traveling all that way, and I do think it's a huge win for Penn State and they move forward, but it's going to be an interesting one. It's definitely one of those games that you feel pretty good that Penn State's going to win, but if USC comes out uh, swinging and uh, Miller Moss plays really good football in that first quarter, maybe they're up 14-0 and then we have to totally rethink that entire game, but it's going to be awesome to watch that one. No two ways about that. It's going to be absolutely incredible incredible in one of those weekends where the Big Ten, we're going to figure out a ton about it this upcoming weekend. But let's take our second break here. And when we come back, we're going to break down two big time 12, a big 12 games. We'll get to Arizona at BYU as well as Kansas State at Colorado right after this. So stick with us. <laughs> 